Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be talking about palpation of the shoulder joint. And so when we're palpating at the shoulder, or any joint for that matter, we want to be feeling for swelling, laxity, tone, deformity, but perhaps most importantly pain, as this may inform us the most about our patient's condition. So as to not slow your video down, we're not going to be comparing the affected and unaffected sides. But of course, in practice, we always want you to compare the left and right so you can clarify your patient diagnosis. Right, let's get to it. Let's get clinical. So now we're going to look at palpation of the ACJ, the acromioclavicular joint. So what the ACJ is, is the articulation between the clavicle and the spine of scapula where they meet here and its main role is to start spinning and gliding when the shoulder's in higher degrees of abduction and elevation. So to feel it, what we're going to do is we're going to find where the joint meets. So we're going to trace clavicle around, and then you can feel back and feel the spine of the scapula. As you come around here, you're going to have the lateral border of the acromion, and then what you're going to feel for is a gap, which is just here. And this gap lets you know that we've got where the clavicle is meeting the acromion. So now we know we're on the joint where those two meet. So we've got a couple of choices that are routinely done for palpation. One is an anterior, posterior, and AP glide. And another one is from the top coming down in a cordad glide. You don't need to do both. You can pick one or the other just as long as it's part of your screening process for the shoulder. So if we're going to pick the anterior posterior glide, what we're going to do is we're going to get one of our thumbs and put it onto the joint line. And then we're going to use our pisy form, our hand here, and we're going to provide our pressure through here. So we're not um, providing all the pressure from our thumbs. It's going to hurt your thumbs. If not now, two, three years down the line, you'll feel it. We want to save our thumbs. So hand's going to come onto the top, and then we're just guiding down, sinking through to try and appreciate what the joint feels like. Don't be afraid to kind of, as long as it's not painful for the patient, to sink in all the way to the back because you're going to have the scapula that's dropping back anyway with the motion. So you're need, going to need to get right to the end to appreciate um, what it actually feels like beginning, middle and end range. The same situation is true for the cordad glide. So again, we trace clavicle, we trace spinous scapula, we find the joint line. This time we're just going to swoop up and we're going to get the joint from the top aspect. So here, we're going to put our thumb in the same position. It's just rolled up a little bit. And same idea, Pisi form with the other hand. It's going to come onto the thumb, and then we're going to glide the joint in a cord our direction down. And again, we're going to have, instead of the scapula protracting, we're going to have the scapula depressing. So make sure you can get all the way down to appreciate the end feel. So adjacent to this, we have our sternoclavicular joint. Um, and this is where the clavicle is joining in towards the, the sternum, the manubrium. And this is another place you can palpate. It's not routinely done unless um, there's pain in and around the area or you want to be a bit more thorough with your shoulder assessment. So to find this one is, is quite nice and easy on most people. So we're just going to trace the clavicle coming in medially and you'll just feel a little notch at the end of the clavicle then you're going to feel a bit of space and this space is is the is the joint line so from here what we do is we drop off ever so slightly laterally so we're on the edge of the clavicle and very very gently we're going to place our pisy form here and we're going to get our hand out of the way of the patient's neck no one wants to feel that when you're palpating so we're going to drift off this way and from there we're going to do a very very gentle um, AP pressure through, which you probably, it won't even look like I'm really moving probably on the camera, but I can still feel the beginning, the middle and the end range. Um, it should have some movement, but just be quite light how you feel. So let's take a quick look at an anterior posterior glide of the glenohumeral head. So in order to do this, what I recommend is that you take your hand out and you just sort of cup it laterally around the patient's shoulder. Um, not too far over this way, 
because you're actually just going to be driving the scapula down. We're not going to actually be gliding the, the glenohumeral head on the glenoid fossa. So we're going to come a bit more off like so. Now from here, even though it's described as an AP glide, um, we're actually going to glide it slightly diagonally because the, the surface of the glenoid fossa is actually angled. So if we're pushing directly down, we're kind of jamming and compressing it anyway. So just bear in mind that you want your pressure slightly off, although it's still typically classified and written as an AP glenohumeral head glide. So from here, simply we just apply our pressure coming down this way and we take the, um, the humeral head to the end of available range. And with the other palpation like we did for the ACJ and the sternoclavicular joint, you're going to find the scapula is going to take up a bit of the slack to start with. So as I start to press here on poly, I can feel there's a combination going on. So once I get to the end, then I continue my journey till I feel the very end of the glenohumeral joint. And we can release there. So we're looking for a reproduction of pain or stiffness, and particularly stiffness due to the inability of the humeral head to glide back posteriorly. And the common reasons for this are dysfunctional and um, posterior muscles uh, like rhomboids, etc., or a tight posterior capsule, which won't allow the glenohumeral head to drive back. Also, by virtue of our typical patient protracting, everything at the front wants to be used and it pulls the humeral head further forwards as well making it harder for us to glide back. So it's a useful quick assessment and you can also use it as a, a mini treatment to see if it uh, reduces their symptoms on repeating other tests. So now we're going to look at our palpation of infraspinatus and teres minor. So I'm sure as we all know it inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus so if we bring Paul's arm back up here so that's going to be sitting somewhere around here. So we can't get to it because it's stuck under deltoid at the moment. But what we can do is if we bring up into flexion, you can see the humeral head start to drop back. And then from here, we bring the shoulder into an adducted position. What it does is it drops the greater tubercle a lot further posteriorly. Just come out to there. What we do from here is we follow the, um, the spine of the scapula across here and then we can feel the glenohumeral head again here. So we know roughly in this patch of, of flesh tissue here between the humeral head and the spinous scapula is where our infraspinatus and the teres minor is going to be starting to come up to. So we can roll and press on that tissue and see if it's abnormally tender and see if there's been irritation to that region. Do bear in mind that this is quite a sensitive region anyway. We've got a suprascapular nerve that starts to weave in and around this region. Um, but remember that you're going to be comparing left to right, so you're looking for something that's abnormally sensitive or irritable on one side relative. So let's look at palpation of some other key areas around the shoulder. So let's start off with the long head of biceps. So the easiest way to find the bicepital group, which is where the long head of biceps is, is by just sort of placing your hand gently on the lateral aspect and letting your thumb rest. It seems like a crude way of doing it, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna be right on uh, that bicepital groove. From here, you can just roll your thumb medial and laterally and just see if you are in fact on a groove. So because we know the tendon of the long head of biceps runs down here, we can feel it flick if we get medial and lateral rotation going on. So the way we do that is we put our thumb on that groove, we bend the elbow up, and then we rock like so into medial and lateral rotation. You should be able to feel the fibers flicking a little bit. This uh, tends to be quite sore, um, which you could confirm as a lesion with speeds test, um, but it's quite sore in and related to rotator cuff pathology mostly because as we'll probably keep repeating quite a lot of these videos, we've got very much a protracted population. So everything anterior gets used and the long head of biceps because um, as it, the name suggests, it's longer and it's quite thin, it's quite susceptible to irritation. So that's a good point to look at. Moving on from here, we can look at a portion of the subscapularis. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna feel for 
the coracoid process. So start with uh, your thumb on the humerus, move in medially and try and have a feel for it. It's quite a unusual kind of angle, it's quite an acute angle if you look in your anatomy textbook. Um, and once you've found it, we're going to drop off laterally. And so we know that we're going to be roughly on the lesser tubicle and between. So we're going to guide our thumb or finger up and down there. And we'll be palpating along with pec tissue um, and aspect of the subscapularis. And we can see if that's adversely tender relative to the other side in relation to our patient's history. So another useful area to have a quick check on is, is the upper fibers of the pec minor and pec major muscles. So just get your fingers, thumb, doesn't matter too much, and just work in and around the local tissue and see if it's abnormally tender. Another place you can check for tenderness, which can be relevant, is if you come distal onto the clavicle and you can just scoop and press you're pressing on the tissue, we're not gliding the clavicle, but we're pushing on the tissue that kind of meets it. You can see if it's abnormally tender there. It's hypothesized in uh, a fair few sources that the pec minor can get quite, uh, and the pec tissue can get quite sticky around the clavicle and could be stopping this rolling action here. From here, we can also check out what uh, the supraspinatus is up to. So we ask the patient to pop their hand behind their back so for the video, we're getting um, Polly here to do it. It's supine, obviously, but that's quite uncomfortable for a lot of patients to do if they've got a shoulder pathology. So we'd normally do this in sitting, but seeing as we've got a good close up here, we're going to work from here. So the way we're going to find supraspinatus is we've actually just brought the greater tubicle forward from a, a more lateral position. So if I get Polly to take her arm back around. So if we start in this position, it's sitting more here a lot more lateral, but we can't really get to it too well with, uh, with the deltoid being in the way. So if we ask Paul to put a hand in, this draws it inwards so we can access it a bit better. So we know it sits a bit more forward, so you're going to be feeling a bit more anterior. And all you do from here is you draw your finger around the spinous scapula, find the lateral border of the acromion, and you sneak just around the front, so the anterior lateral corner from there you just drop down and you're going to feel a kind of ridge of bone and tissue and it's here that we're just rolling our fingers over to get to uh, an aspect of the supraspinatus tendon. If when you start doing this uh, you get a bit panicky about, oh, I don't know if I'm exactly on it, please don't worry about it. As long as you swoop from the lateral aspect of the acromion forwards and you just run your fingers around this area, you'll be on part of it and you can see if it reproduces that tenderness or irritation that's associated with the patient's condition. So here are the key points to summarize this video on palpation of the shoulder joint. Break down your palpation of the shoulder into an anterior and posterior view, ensuring you compare affected and unaffected sides. When palpating your patient, look for deformity, swelling, laxity, tone, and most importantly, pain. You can also look for signs of specific pathology in each view, as mentioned throughout the video. And that concludes our video on palpation of the shoulder joint. From here, we'd like it if you looked at our other videos in the clinical physio catalogue, such as observation of the shoulder joint or active range of motion testing of the shoulder. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon on clinical physio.